I've known Bruce Lipschitz since about 1983. He developed something called the Lipschitz Higher Order Cuprate. That's what made Bruce famous. I'm not blaming Bruce Lipschitz for any of this. Yes, I've been in direct contact with some of the researchers James so boldly mocks and misrepresents. Bruce Lipschitz made a video on peptide synthesis for Dave Farina. What Dave did was a false portrayal. He brought in three experts. Only two of those people that he brought on knew that they were being brought on. So we will address that, not so much tonight, but that will be addressed in due time. Two of those people on his, that he brought on knew that they were being brought on. Uh, one of them didn't even know. Nope, that's a lie. All three knew. You're just lying, as usual. It's also a pointless lie, since everything they say proves you wrong. Three experts. Only two of those people that he brought on knew that they were being brought on. Dave Farina, he took a video that Bruce Lipschitz had made that enables synthetic chemistry to take place. Then Dave applied that video to my video and made it seem as if Bruce was responding to my video. I really want the synthetic chemists, my synthetic chemist colleagues to critique me. Well, you asked for it, so let's chat with Bruce a little bit. So let's chat with Bruce a little bit. So let's chat with Bruce a little bit. In this ooze emerged the first life. I find it problematic in that there's an extrapolation from a very small experiment in a laboratory Researchers have now created life from non-living parts. There were many kinds of molecules in the primordial soup. I'm boiling up some primordial soup. Your entire civilization, it all begins right here in this little pond of goo. Dear Bruce, would you please listen to Dave Farina's original video upon which I was commenting so that you can see with what kind of man you have aligned yourself in taking Dave Farina's side in this. You really should know about his claims in the area of abiogenesis since you have now become aligned. How do you envision polypeptides forming when you do not have side chain protection? Much of my video, you can see just the one on the peptides, which I refer him to, discusses how hard synthesis becomes when side chain protection is not around. Same holds true for polysaccharides and RNA synthesis and DNA synthesis due to the basis. Activation is yet another story. Finally, please send me a reference for polypeptides being formed in water, even with surfactants present. If there's nothing else that you address in this email, please give me these references. I want to learn from you, please. And I put this little red note here, uh, a note how many times I'm gonna to have to ask him for this. Because remember, no answer from a scientist is an answer in, in itself. Because I knew if he did not have those references, then those references don't exist. That nobody's making polypeptides from unprotected amino acids. Nobody, nobody's doing this. What did I say wrong in my series? I had two synthetic chemists view everything before posting. Chemists each, each with more than 30 years academic and industrial experience. And they saw a couple of trivial things which I corrected before posting. So how wrong might I be? I had several colleagues at Rice, one a synthetic organic chemist and another a bioorganic chemist, tell me that they watched my series and they said I was completely correct. Yet you implied that I was wrong. In what way was I wrong? Please compare what I said relative to Dave's original video and see with whom you have become aligned. I sincerely appreciate the help and input from you, one whom I have considered a longtime friend. So please do me this justice. Many thanks. God bless, Jim. Almost every slide and every talking point in his entire series was shockingly stupid. 
Dave said I was wrong. Every slide was wrong. Let's see what Dave's expert has to say. Hi, Jim. Great to hear from you. It's been a while. Although clearly we both probably wish that the circumstances were quite different. Firstly, I've never seen what you're referring to. Whoa, he's never seen it. He never saw my polypeptide synthesis. He wasn't responding to me, but Dave made it as if he was responding to me. You asked for it, so let's chat with Bruce a little bit. Firstly, I've never seen what you're referring to. I'm also curious why you claim that I'm aligned in any way with either side of this debate. Here's the story. It's unfortunate that it appears to have gotten a bit out of hand. Dave Farina, as you must know, it wasn't embarrassing to Dave. Bruce didn't say anything embarrassing, but it's some personal things that I, that I, I don't think are worth saying. But he then does say, I have not seen him in years. Dave asked me to comment on some of your writings, on my writings, things that I had probably written for inference before Dave made his elucidating the agenda thing, I suppose, or something. But the only writings I have on Origin of Life are, are uh, in the journal Inference, and then those have been taken and put in, in a few books. So Dave wanted him to comment on my writings, and specifically about what we are doing, chemistry in water, and, and does this show prove you wrong in what you say? So Dave is writing to his friend to say, can you prove Jim to a wrong? Or what you, is what you're doing proving Jim to a wrong? That's fine. I have no problem. Dave, go ahead and knock yourself out. Ask all the chemists in the world. Is what Jim to is saying is wrong? And I won't stop the narrative. Put it right under my, my videos. We won't take it out. That's okay. I open it up. I'm not, I'm not afraid of the discussion. He goes on. He says, I told him that this is not something that I wish to deal with, to comment on, and certainly not to take sides. I'm just too committed to changing the world of organic chemistry to help chemistry get away from being so dependent in petroleum. Nonetheless, with Blank asking me, that's the common contact, which it's irrelevant, with Blank asking me to pitch in and Dave asking for a statement, I did send him one long ago. I would have to find it to even know, recall what I said. What kind of person would portray Professor Lipschitz as commenting on my video, knowing that Professor Lipschitz had never seen my video? What kind of person would do that? He goes on in his email. I was promised that it would be used carefully, that it would not be used against me, precisely in a way that you are now claiming exists. And as noted above, what you sent as a clip is new to me, news to me. I never approved any of this. Oh, Dave. Why'd you throw your friend under the bus? Why'd you do this to him? So here's what Dave writes when he comes out with this latest video of his. He says, last, last year, year I, I made, made a video, video about James Tour, a chemist and creationist who speaks out against origin of life research. He didn't like it much, so he decided to make a 14 part series about how dumb I am. So he decided to make a 14 part series about how dumb I am. And he made a 14 part series about how dumb I am. Dave is dumb, Dave is dumb, Dave is dumb every 10 seconds. And it's like, he said those okay. words. I haven't even watched this 14 part series, but does he kind of uh, say those words? Or he, not acts dumb. Like dumb? He, he calls me clueless. He has no idea what he's talking about. No, Dave, I never said you're dumb. If you came out looking dumb, that's on you. I just showed the data. I never made an ad hominem attack. I just said you're wrong. I just said you're wrong. He really pulled out all the stops, parading all of his classic fallacious talking points, with plenty of bald-faced lies and deliberate misrepresentations of scientific research peppered in for good measure. What kind of person would portray Professor Lipschitz as commenting on my video, knowing that Professor Lipschitz had never seen my video? He goes on. There is no equilibrium to discuss, since the chemistry inside these biomolecules has nothing to do with the water that surrounds them. Remember, he's not talking about coupling in water. He knows the difference. This is in a hydrophobic pocket, in a hydrophobic domain. I said peptide couplings do not go in water. Dave has specifically said peptide coupling in water is no problem. Peptide synthesis in water is absolutely not a problem. Not just on this first video. I cited from his second video. He still doesn't get it. Dave, if you would just listen to the teaching rather than just going around criticizing everything, you might learn something. I just don't know if you're teachable. I hope that this helps, he writes, at least somewhat, to clarify various aspects associated with your comments in your note. I'm attaching key publications that might help to clarify our role in all of this discussion. Should you have questions, etc., I'd be happy to discuss the science with you further. And at any time, Jim, best regards, Bruce. This is how most scientific discussions go on. 
There's not ad hominem attacks, people saying that what they're doing is nefarious. There's none of that. This is the way normal discussions go on. We discuss these sorts of things. It's a really dumb thing to say. It sounds dumber every time you hear it. It was hilariously stupid from top to bottom. Every talking point in his entire series was shockingly stupid. It is astounding that he would say something so incredibly stupid. But then again, he's speaking to his congregation. Your entire public identity is lying for Jesus. He's lying. He lies through his teeth. You're wrong in lying, you know. All of them know he's a complete clown. Is part of Team Jesus? Yes. It's exclusively yes. Team Jesus. And by the way, here's why he's saying these things. He's super, super uh, Jesus guy. I mean, he seems like a fine young man. So I wrote back to Bruce. So this was uh, uh, the next day at 10.39 a.m. Dear Bruce, first of all, thank you so much for your very gracious reply. After the way that you were portrayed in the video, I thought you were party to Dave's direct attack. But now I went back and watched his recent video a fourth time. Indeed, you might have not even known what he was teeing you up for. I had no idea who Dave Farina was. Out of the blue, he attacks not just my science, but my faith. Why is he such a hater of Christians? So I refer him to Dave's first 45-minute video, elucidating the agenda of James Tour. And I go on. But putting aside my faith, his science was so wrong. Watch this above link. I think you will thrust your face in your hands in shame that this young man was trained in your lab for a summer. Based on that, Dave came out with a two-part series, which you are in. The man is quite unkind, but more than that, inaccurate and deceiving to the lay public. And since you are in it, everyone thinks you are aligned with his view. So you are aligned whether you know it or not. I cannot fathom that he did not tell you what he had planned for your recording. I'm obliged to respond since you are clearly not making the peptide bond in water. but within a hydrophobic pocket, as you say. As noted above, what you sent as a clip is news to me. I never approved it, any of it. So you are directly juxtaposed to me in the slam down. Start watching at 11 minutes. You are now in the minefield, sadly, but it does not surprise me but that Dave did this to you. Imagine what he does to those that he does not like. I looked over your two attached papers. Thank you, but neither of your papers addresses my underscored question to you in my former email. And I put in there exactly the same thing. I'm asking him now a second time. What I am seeking is not the question of making amino acids more lipophilic, although that is important. Don't some of those active side chains participate as nucleophiles in those couplings if left unprotected? If not, then why do we go to such efforts to protect those active side chains during peptide synthesis? If you cannot find these references, then it does suggest that one could not get polypeptides by direct coupling of amino acids, but one needs to explore other routes like Matthew Pounder is mapping out. See my peptide video. Matthew Pounder is not coupling amino acids in water. Dave has got that wrong in his second video. We'll deal with that. Dave's got that so wrong. He's not coupling Zvirionic amino acids. He's making a peptide bond totally differently. And Dave doesn't know how to read the paper and figure that out. So Bruce writes back to me on the 30th at 11, 11 p.m. Hi, Jim. Thanks for your note. After seeing the video that I made and sent to Dave, I'm even more confused by all of this. Well, Bruce, welcome to my world. The video makes it very clear that peptide chemistry to which I am referring is done inside a hydrophobic pocket using micellular catalyst that has water on the outside. So I fail to see why anyone would think this means that peptides are made in water. Peptide synthesis in water is not a problem, James. Dave thinks it is. You fail to see it. I fail to see it. I agree with you. They are in water as a medium, but as you note, they're actually made inside an organic solvent of sorts, which is the lipophilic portion of the micellular array. That's the fact associated with this peptide synthesis. Bruce, you and I agree. Dave doesn't agree with either of us. Peptide synthesis in water is not a problem, James. And why anyone would argue that if the peptide is being made, as stated with dissolution in water, that somehow the equilibrium shifts toward the product formation in water, we both know that is not correct. But I do not see even a hint of this ridiculous thinking in my video. No, it wasn't in your video. It's in Dave's video. I agree with you. And why anyone would argue 
that if a peptide is being made as stated with dissolution in water, that means in water, dissolved in water, that any, that somehow the equilibrium shifts toward the product? Dave thinks it shifts toward the product. Remember he says it's exergonic, it's gonna go, it's certainly go in water. Peptide coupling with a suitable activator in water is exergonic. Dave, why are you disagreeing with me and now with your own expert? You brought in this guy, I didn't, you brought him in. But you should have learned something from him. Learn from him now. If you can't receive it from me, at least receive it from him. But I think, I think that, that it's gonna be hard for you because you're not receiving any of this. I just wish you would. As I told Dave, I could only address what I know from our work, and that means what we are able to do using micellar catalysis. And while in water, that is not about changing the properties of the organic molecules to suddenly have water solubility. His molecules aren't soluble in water. He's made them so that they're not soluble in water. They're very low solubility in water. So they migrate very rapidly into his hydrophobic domains. That's the way that works. He goes on. So I think we are on the same page here. So he's talking about me, Jim Tour. Bruce Lipschitz is on the same page with Jim Tour, And as I noted previously, my only goal is to help convert organic chemistry to a sustainable discipline. And that just happens to mean following nature's lead, which means chemistry and water. That's great. Let's move chemistry toward more toward aqueous systems. That's great. In my lab, we do a lot of chemistry without any solvents. Uh, we drive it, drive it without any solvents. I mean, we, we try to do this all the time in my lab. What's that, James? You haven't heard of ball milling? Well, as you can see from these figures, this requires an understanding of geological processes, which is why you don't know anything about it. It does not mean that everything we touch is remarkably water soluble and that I have solved all of our synthetic problems by simply switching out of water for an organic medium. Hardly. But I can see how this might come across this way and why everyone watching might, may fail to see, understand the truth. So let me get it out there. Bruce Lipschitz is an upright guy. This is the way scientific conversations go, go forward. Dave Farina does not deal with scientific conversations as they are supposed to be dealt with. I am concerned, I admit, in some ways that I am being viewed as involved. This is unfortunate since I made it clear today that my case was stated about our chemistry and that was the end of it for me. I do not know what this will lead to, if anything, but I had thought, at least as far as I was concerned, that this situation had either ended or moved ahead without me. I guess that's not what happened. Bummer. Best regards, Bruce. What an upright guy. What a real scientist he is. Real scientist. Dear Bruce, thank you for your candor. Oh, but by the way, he never, he never gave me those references. He never addressed what I asked him in, in this for, for the references because they don't exist of peptides coupling together with their, their side chains unprotected. As for Cronin and Benner, my addresses to them will be far more pointed. I was called nefarious and corrupt, respectively, for disagreeing with consensus. Not once did they point out a problem with the content of my video. They pointed to things I never said in my video, but nothing to the things that I actually said. One last thing, which is the third time I'm asking for references to which you must know. The very thing that, uh, that, that I asked him twice already, I'm asking him a third time because I know. Because remember, no answer is an answer in, in itself. So I, I wrote to, to Bruce on Friday, December 31 at 11, 18 a.m. And yeah, I know it was, it was New Year's Eve, but I'm always in my office. Um, I'm, I'm either in my office or in my church or in my home, and that's my life. That's just what I do because I, I love my work and I love my Lord. And so that's where you're gonna find me. So I was in my office, but interestingly, Bruce was in his office as well. So he's contacting me also on December 31st, 2021 at 12.26 p.m. He says, hi, James. I can appreciate your interest in obtaining references to peptide chemistry and water. I had sent our latest papers on this in my note to you on the 29th, but I suspect that you were caught up in the text content to see that at the bottom. No, Bruce, I saw them, and in fact, I went through them searching for the answer. No, you didn't address that. What I wanted was amino acid synthesis with free side chains that were their active side chains, not like the, the aniline that, that, that you use or something that, that had no active side chains. No, I wanted active side chains. That's what I was asking for. Those were not addressed in your paper. 
Here it is again, along with our references. So he resent me the references, along with our related papers on the topic, numbered one, two, and three attached. The references therein may also be of some value to you. But my impression is that you are correct, that the world still relies on protecting group chemistry to varying degrees in water or not. Yes, the side chains, example lysine, can certainly participate if it's free amine is available. So indeed, there are these limitations with which the field must still contend. Yes, there are still many problems to be solved. Hard to imagine anyone disagreeing with this notion. Uh, yeah, it's hard for me to imagine why Dave keeps disagreeing with this. You ha half the amino acids have active side chains. You've got to keep those protected. We don't know how that ever happened on early earth. You can't make peptides, boom, it's over. It's all over. If you're gonna deal with amino acids, Beyond what Bruce said about involvement with lipids, peptide coupling with a suitable activator in water is exergonic, so this chemistry is not specific to hydrophobic pockets. Of course, neither those reagents nor Bruce's methodology are prebiotically relevant, although the concept sure is, but more importantly, they demonstrate that peptide synthesis in water is absolutely not a problem. So, he says peptide synthesis in water is absolutely not a problem. Who are you going to believe? Bruce Lipschitz? Jim Tour, somebody who studied this, who publishes real papers on lots of different chemical subjects, been doing organic chemistry for nearly 40 years, or Dave Farina. Dave is wrong again, even as shown by his own expert. As Bruce Lipschitz said, and why anyone would argue that if the peptide is being made as stated within, with dissolution in water, that somehow the equilibrium shifts toward product formation in water, we both know that's not correct. Professor Bruce Lipschitz, Dave Farina's peptide expert, agrees with me. The method of bulverism is to assume that your opponent is wrong and then explaining his or her error. In that video, I provide the ideological context that elucidates his obsession with discrediting an entire field of science he doesn't understand. I now have to demonstrate with far more precision how inept James is in commenting on this field. Wolverist assumes a speaker's argument is invalid or false, and then explains why the speaker came to make that mistake, attacking the speaker or the speaker's motive. He says wrong things because of his religion. Wolverism is a fallacy of relevance which one accuses an argument of being wrong on the basis of the arguer's identity or motive. The point is that you lie about science because of your religion. He has put religion before science, so when in conflict, he must deny science, while pretending he uses science to reach his conclusions. But these are strictly speaking irrelevant to the argument's validity or truth. Thank you, Mr. Spock. Isn't it funny how far out of his way James goes to pretend that religion has nothing to do with what he says, and yet the only scientist he can get to appear alongside him in his entire series is part of Team Jesus? Is Bruce part of Team Jesus? Just, just wondering, is Bruce part of Team Jesus? He seems to have come alongside me. He's just a scientist looking at, at the chemistry. The discussion that I had with Bruce Lipschitz is exactly the type of discussion that scientists normally have. We present the data and they come along, yeah, you're right. Under the conditions that you're talking about, sure, you're absolutely right. You know, I was talking about, about apples, you're, you're, you're bringing up oranges, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, these, the, this, the, we're correct on this. You present data and people kind of move their views around and they say, okay, I see the data, you're right. Yeah, I, 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 I can't think of any reference where people are using unprotected amino acids, so you're right. The amino acids are all going to have to have their side chains protected. If someone feels the need to evoke a deity in explaining the origin of life, such that a god must have wiggled his nose and coaxed some molecules into the same vicinity to kickstart the process, they can do so. They can pretend that a deity helped them find their keys this morning if they want to. But that's not science, and science does not require such an entity to explain phenomena. Did I bring God into any of this? I just explained it with the chemistry. I didn't bring God into any of this. So I don't know what Dave's talking about. The science itself screams out that, that abiogenesis type chemistry is so loaded, 
It would never be available on an early Earth. That's what I'm saying. So some of you are aware of my recent video debunking James Tour, a chemist who speaks out against research on the origin of life. In that video, I dismantle his favorite talking points and provide the ideological context that elucidates his obsession with discrediting an entire field of science he doesn't understand. Uh, that's really interesting. My discussion with Bruce Lipschitz is how scientific discussions are supposed to happen. There's no psychoanalysis. If you invested in some therapy, you'd stand a shot at realizing that your entire public identity is lying for Jesus. It's without attacks on people's faith. Science illiterate creationist sheep. There are some concessions that come forth as people see other people's responses. With Dave, it's never this way. He controls the discussion under his videos. I block very liberally because mm -hmm. I just don't want to deal with it. I'm not going to get yeah. into a back and forth that lasts a week with 100 different people simultaneously. I'm just not going to deal yeah. with it. This, this channel is my space. And if I, don't, if I mm -hmm. want to block or if I want to delete spam comments or if I want to do any of that stuff, that's my choice and I do that. And I don't care mm -hmm. what people say about that. Uh, you try to comment under his video. Start disagreeing with him. Start pointing out other things. He'll delete you. He'll delete it, you come back again, you're off. You'll never be able to comment under that thing again. Why? He controls the narrative because he can't deal with the truth. He can't deal with the facts coming out. He misquotes so many researchers, uses countless straw men, just lies through his teeth, misrepresents what I said. If I disagree with him, he'll call me, he says, it's stupidity, it's corruption, it's lies, and it's my being on Team Jesus. We've seen a false portrayal by Dave Farina of his friend, Professor Lipschitz, responding to my video series when in fact, Professor Lipschitz never did any such thing. Professor Lipschitz ended up agreeing with me that peptide synthesis in water, the reactions favor the starting material, not the products. The thermodynamics are against you. The equilibrium is against you. He also underscores with me that side chain reactivity is a big problem. So what Professor Lipschitz did is he never had any active side chains. He totally loaded the system. He never had any amino acids. It was all non-zverionic structures. He protected the mean on one component, the carboxylic acid on the other, things that early earth, we can't imagine how early earth would do that with all these 20 amino acids. Maybe somebody will find a prebiotically relevant synthesis that'll show that. To date, it's not been shown. It's undeniable that he's not just not understanding the science he doesn't want to understand, he's actively lying. Because he knows that his viewers, they have, I mean, they don't have the faintest idea what he's talking about. It's, 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 it's another language to them. It does, yeah. It's just gibberish. He shows a paper, yammers about it, speaks very confidently, and everybody goes, yeah, and they cheer for him. It's like, dude, he's everything out of the In the next video, we're gonna address another one of Dave Farina's so-called experts. We'll address that one too. If you're enjoying this series, give us a thumbs up and click the subscribe button, and that way you'll hear when we're coming out with new videos. There are no salaried employees in this organization. All the accounting, all the legal work, that's all done by friends of mine. The only thing that I have to pay for is the production work, and if you could help us out with that, I'd appreciate it. There's a link below where you can just click on that and help us in several different ways. Thank you.